As a musician, I want to just give everything I have for free. I view music more as a collective idea rather than something that needs to be sold like a product. Hi, my name is Stephen Walsh. I go by the alias Black White. I'm a student here at App. I'm a sophomore. Um, EDM slash, you know, trap influences or dubstep influences. Occasionally I'll try to throw in some hip-hop stuff. Um, but, you know, I, I really try to, like, just kind of keep the spectrum as broad as possible just because I don't like sticking to one thing and only making one thing, you know. For all my life, everyone always assumed that um, I was of Hispanic or Latino descent. I'm actually uh, mixed with black and white, and so I decided, oh, yeah, I'll just go with that. I figured it was as simple as, um, you know, just... It was more me, and it was more personable. I had gone by other aliases before, it was just that I think that that one was really the one that kind of clicked, and um, so far I like it a lot. I started out when I was about 12 years old. Uh, I was homeschooled for just that year, um, seventh grade, and um, I had a chance to take a software engineering class, and I was like, ah, might as well. At the time, I didn't really do a whole lot of in-depth stuff. It was mostly like, you know, a lot of loops, and you know, taking pre-made stuff and kind of making it into something that I like. Um, and then from there, it just kind of continued and growing. Uh, I kept, kept doing that for about a year, and then I took a break for a few years, and then I, uh, my mom, she had an iPad, and she had GarageBand on there, and I was like, oh, you know, let me try making a song. I haven't done that in a while. So I was like, all right, I'll try it. So then I did it, and I was like, man, that was a lot of fun. Like, I can't remember anything. <laughs> but, you know, it's definitely a lot of fun. And then uh, I bought uh, Ableton that Christmas with my Christmas money. <laughs> Out of my schedule, I'll be like, all right, well, I have to do this, 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 and this, but I really want to make a song, so I can do all that tomorrow. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a lot of that, and I guess for me, it's become more of a thing where I make time for it versus me having, you know, oh, I got an hour, I mean, what am I doing? Ah, I'll just make a beat, you know, it's, it's, I don't know, it's become more of a, a passion for me over the years, and I think because of that, it's kind of carried over into college, so I really make a lot of time for it. Um, probably more than what I should, but <laughs> um, that's all debatable. I remember playing in Battle of the Bands, and uh, I just kind of felt like I was there in that, um, in my own little world, but I was also really trying to cater to the people there and show them my world at the same time. That was actually uh, my first show, and that's the only show I've ever done. So I wasn't you know, 100% sure I was gonna get it, but, um, you know, I was pretty sure. So I was like, all right, well, I guess I should probably get a DJ controller. So then <laughs> I bought one, and then uh, my friend, so what happened was is that I bought it, and then the program that I needed to DJ, I was on a 14-day free trial, and um, so I, I'd literally been DJing for like two weeks before I played that show. And so I just came up, I, I was like, all right, what songs do I wanna play? I picked the songs and just practiced the transitions over and over and over again for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. And, hours. and then, the, like I said, the program that I was using, it was, um, I had the 14 day free trial and then it literally ran out like the day before the Battle of the Bands. So I was like, ah, you know, I was so close, so close. And so um, what happened was that my friend was like, yo, you can just use my controller, you know, it'll be fine, you know, cause it'll just act like the license. And as soon as you plug it in, I'll let you use it. So I was like, all right, cool. Where I was like, this is nothing like my tiny little, you know, two channel mixer that I have at home. I don't know, I'd literally been DJing for two weeks and then I had to switch to that at the last minute and then given the circumstances, I think that it was a good show, but that was the only show I've done and I want to do more, <laughs> it's so much fun. One thing that I try to do when I'm making um, beats on my own, I try to like, you know, become immersed into what I'm making and really like get a feel for it so I can put everything into it. And so that was kind of what I was feeling when I was on stage. It was like, you know, I want to make sure that, you know, they get a full sense of, you know, who I am as a producer and also as, you know, a performer. It was a, it was a good sense of accomplishment given that it was my first show. And like, you know, if you want to count all the years, seven years of being, you know, a bedroom producer, it's really something to see your music outside of your bedroom and off of SoundCloud or whatever it is that it's on. I guess for me that was just really, that was really something to see people react to the way that I would transition between song to song or like drop the song and you know, it was just really, really cool. You know, it was just something really special. Really.
Part of me kind of goes through this phase where if I find something new, I listen to it constantly. And then I'm like, oh, I gotta like figure out how to make this, I gotta do this. And you know, I try to like recreate whatever it is that they make, but also add my own spin to it. As far as music's concerned, I have a far more collaborative mindset just because I feel like there's so much you can learn from other people. Um, just because when you're in constant competition with people, you don't really have that mindset to really um, learn and really grow and I feel like that's a very important thing to have in you know not only when you're making your music and you know working with other people on music but just in the music industry in general but I guess this is my perspective on it I really try to collaborate as much as possible um, just because I want to learn more from the other producer and really you know see how their process is and compare it to mine and just different things like that. If someone were to sample my stuff, I'd be in shock. I'd be like, oh my gosh, like, you really wanna like turn this into your own? Like, oh man, that's that's awesome, you know? But, you know, I don't know. People have different perspectives on it, but I really feel like music should just be free and accessible to anyone. And then the only time that you should be able, or that you should pay for it is when you're getting that, you know, once in a lifetime experience at, you know, Coachella or, you know, at their concerts or something like that. Like, I think that's the only time when you should have to pay to listen to music just because each show should be different. You know, it should be something completely new. Like, my, I guess my biggest priority right now is music, but I think right now that's that's kind of where I'm headed in that direction to really pursue music 100% just because it's it's my love. You know, it's, it's, it's my passion. It's, you know, I can't imagine doing anything else. You can find me on SoundCloud. You can find some more stuff on my Bandcamp. And I'm actually gonna be releasing some more stuff on there soon. And um, all my stuff on there is for free. So um, all you have to do is just hit the buy now and put zero in and you can get it all for free. So 